Hello, this is Professor Billier from Worcester Polytechnic Institute, and I'm working on an Instron 5544 in Blue Hill 3. And this video is to show how to do a flexure test and develop the method. Why would you want to do a flexure test? Well, when you have a very strong material, stiff material like bone, pulling it in uniaxial failure will not work with this machine, which is a 2,000 Newton load cell. Uh, and also, flexural properties are sometimes different than uniaxial properties in tension or compression. The large deflection you can measure on this machine produces small strains in the bone, which are hard to measure also. And relatively low loads need to be used because they develop large moments and cause large, large stresses in the material. So the first thing you want to do as with any test, is calibrate the force transducer. Make sure there's nothing on the load cell. Right now, the only thing I have is the upper anvil. Takes a few seconds. It electronically checks that the transducer is working well. It doesn't really calibrate the actual transducer physically. And you don't need to balance it, but I'll do it anyway here because it already balances it in that process. The limits are already set and enabled in this device. I've also moved my crosshead down and set the physical stop, which is very important, so that I do not compress the material into the grips or the anvils uh, and break the load cell. I then go to my methods, and I want to develop a method, so I browse. And in any computer, it will be in a different place. Ours are under users and public. And then within public documents and within Instron, Blue Hill, templates, Instron examples, Blue Hill. Yes, that's a long way down. Here's the full file path. And within that file path, there are different examples. One is a flexure relaxation example, but we want a regular flexure example. Here, as with other types of tests, you have your workspace on the left here. But with Blue Hill 3, we have navigation assistance to walk you through it. I'll be using the ones on the left here. I set my units as usual. I can set other sample properties and text inputs. My specimen, now here's where it becomes different than doing a uniaxial test. Here we can pick two different geometries, rectangular or circular. Because the moment of inertia is involved, not just the area, it is important that you define the width and thickness correctly. The thickness is the vertical direction, the direction of loading, and the width is transverse to that. I'm going to pick circular because I have a circular dowel in my machine. Um, you can select your diameter as usual. You can do either three-point or four-point bending. Picture over here shows you what three-point bending looks like. You have a support span, you have your thickness, your width, and then you have your loading that is centered on that. So these are assumed to be a three-point bending with your loading centered between the span. In four-point bending, you also have a span ratio, and you have a loading span that you can type in in the actual test, and your support span. Again, these should all be symmetric. The span ratio is the ratio of the support span over the loading span. So in this case, it's 2 to 1. You can use 3 to 1 or other custom measures. I've set my span to be 100 millimeters, and I'm doing 3-point bending. You can add, as with other kinds of tests, notes, number inputs, text inputs. These are important here, the, sh the shape and, and the loading is important for the calculations that the Instron software will do for you. But as you notice here, this is a solid cylinder for something like a bone where it's hollow in the center. You'll have to do your own calculations to figure out the stresses and strains and stiffness uh, modulus of the material because it'll have a different moment of inertia. When we go under measurements, we have physical measurements such as time, extension, load, and then we have virtual measurements. As we click on here, it tells you that's a virtual measurement 
flexural strain, flexural extension, flexural stress. If you hit the question mark up here, it'll take you to a description of what each of those are. Those are calculated quantities. Then we can go to what areas of the curve we'd like some calculation to be made at. And um, right here we have the maximum flexor at maximum flexural stress. We'll be able to measure different things such as the load, the stress, the strain, displacement. We also have the modulus being calculated. In Blue Hill 3, you have many different options for what the modulus, which, which is the slope of the stress-strain curve. But if I go under other types, such as Young's modulus, it shows me a picture here that it will calculate under different areas what the, um, what the modulus is. You could have segment modulus, moduli, such as only look between 0 and 10 millimeters and give me the, the slope between there. You could also pick chord, secant, tangent. These are mathematical uh, values that you should know about, and you can pick any of those. Even with hysteresis, it can take the modulus of the hysteresis uh, halfway through the hysteresis, not in the center of the curve. But I'll go back to doing just automatic for this. For my calculations, when I have something like a bone, I want to know the force displacement relationship. So I want the slope and I want it between extension and load and then I can use that in my calculations for the modulus of the material and do it on my own when I put my own calculations for the moment of inertia. Again, for a bone that's hollow. We could set up rounding and others but I'm not going to do that right now. It's the same as for any type of test. Then our test control is going to be very similar to uniaxial. I'm going to start it with the start button. My strain is going to be based on the extension. We could be using extensometers or deflectometers. In four-point bending, they suggest using a deflectometer. But in three-point bending, extension should be fine. Pre-testing is very similar to uniaxial. Also, we can do a preload, auto balance, and pre-cycling. And the test is where flexure is going to be somewhat different than, uh, and, and the end of test, different than a uniaxial test. Here we'll just use extension millimeters per minute. I'm going to put that to 100. But at the end of the test, it could stop at a certain flexural strain. But I want to break my sample, so I'm going to go until the rate of load changes by 40%. And I also don't want to break my machine, so I'll put a stop when my extension is 20 millimeters. Now when we're doing flexure testing, the machine inverts or puts a negative sign in front of your loads and your displacement. So an extension of 20 millimeters is actually going down in the machine, so a compressive. And the load, positive force, is going to be a compressive load. That makes our stress strain curves and our force displacement curves positive in the upward directions. We have to choose how we take our data. This default here is at 50 milliseconds. We could change that to whatever number we want. We can also add other criteria such as every 150 newtons or every 5 newtons. We could take extra data. That's in case we want to make sure we absolutely catch the, the peak load. In Blue Hill 3, we can set the live displays up here at the top. Right now, they're load, flexure extension, and flexural strain. I would like to have four, and I'm not interested in flexural extension, just regular extension. They are actually the same thing for three-point bending. But those are my raw data and my measured flexural strain and flexural stress. I would like indicated. You can only go down to four significant or four decimal points, digits, um, that's more than enough. We can also set soft keys. So here we have balance load at the top. These are also the keys on the actual physical console. I would like to also have a zero extension key up there, but that's also usually on the side here. So I can balance my load and zero extension. I've already balanced my load, so I'm not going to use that again. But I will, for each sample, once I put a tear load on, zero the extension. There's some information about the 
frame and the grips. We don't have those special grips, so I won't go into that. Then we go to the workspace, which is where we set up the type of test we want to do or what we want to see, what kind of calculations we make. We can go, I can start here at the layout or I can start at the top, but the layout, I basically want my two graphs and some calculations. But what do I want in those calculations? I go to results. Here it's already put my specimen label, my max load and stress, my flex modules, which if it's truly linear elastic isotropic material will be the same as the Young's modulus. And we have comments that we can type in. I would also like to add my slope that I added before under calculations. And I would like to have Oops. Uh, I would like to have the slope added in here. And that slope is going to be the newtons per millimeter. I can change my decimal places here and my units also. So now I have not only my modulus in terms of megapascals, but also my slope in terms of newtons per millimeter. There are many other different types of calculations you can make, including stress, and we could also measure strain. So I could actually measure at the maximum flexure stress, what is the flexure strain? I could put that up next to my maximum stress. So it's flexure strain at maximum flexural stress. You could also calculate at max strain, what are the stress and strain, but I would have to do that under calculations. I have to select that as one of the type of calculations we can do. It'll do statistics at the bottom if we'd like it to do those. You know, we can take those out if we want, and we can graph as we do for other tests. Here we're, we're plotting stress and strain already for the first graph. For the second graph, I'd like to see what's happening with over time. Instead of multi-specimen, just during the test, I'd like to see the double Y test with time on the x-axis and both my load and displacement extension on the other axis. I can change the colors for those plots and not have two red plots if I'd like. So I have a red and blue plot. Really important here is what data is being taken. Time extension and load are the most important ones and then I can do any post-processing I'd like. If I'd also like stress and strain, I can add those. And those will only be correct if I use the correct geometry and dimensions. So for a hollow bone, these will not be correct because I can only do a solid cylinder in, the, in this software. I can add extra displays such as uh, the stress and strain to be put in the lower corner and you can play with those uh, in the layout. You can add extra custom layouts also, but I'll leave that for a separate video. Of course, it's always important to output my data and put it in a location. For our course, I'd like to put it where we have our data under C, again under Users, again under Public, and then under Public Documents, we have, for the course, I've already made a place to put these and then I can have it either automatically name the file or not. If you don't put this in, it'll be saved somewhere else, you'll have to find that. I'm not particularly interested in the PDF report, so I'm taking that out, but you can, you can save that also. Exporting the results is that results table we did under the workspace, so the calculated values. And for post-processing, I need my raw data. I can also add at the beginning my specimen properties so I know what the tests were within that file. In the header of that file, I could say, well, what, what, I, what did I call my sample? Was it circular or rectangular? What was the support span for my three-point bending? Was it three-point bending? And then what was the diameter of that specimen? I can move that up. In my test, I can ask what I want to do in the test. And before the start, here it says, enter your laboratory name, your company. I'm going to remove a little bit of that. My rate, my fixture type, and my support span. I'm going to remove support span from here because I'm going to ask that before each test, what's the support span? Width, thickness, 
span ratio are not highlighted here because those are for rectangular specimens. For each test, I'm going to ask what's the support span and the specimen label, but if I want to do my calculations, I need to have my diameter in there. So here I have my rate, support span, and diameter. Before the start, I also asked for rate there, so I'm going to remove that because I don't want the same question twice. And then we're done and we're ready to save and close. I have to save it as. Luckily, that's a right protected file. I don't save over that. I go back to our documents and our class, and I can save it. I'll save this under WPI example and three point example. Save it as a new file name. To do the test, go back to Blue Hill, test. There's my test name. I've already zeroed my load. But my extension is there. I'm going to test a dowel here. Three point bending. I have to put my rate in. My support span, I already know it's 100 millimeters. This is specimen one. My diameter, I measure with my chronometer as 8 millimeters. Before I do this test, I need to put my tear load on, bring my, my sample, the anvil to my sample, put a small tear load on, I'd like to start with about 5 Newton, since it's a 2,000 Newton load cell, and I need to put my safety shield in place, make sure my safety stops, mechanical stops are in place also, and then I'm ready to start my test after I zero the extension either up here or here, and I'm at zero extension at my tear load, and I can start the test. And there it broke. Now you can see this is still going on and on because, because the rate of loading didn't occur fast enough for it to stop immediately when this first part of the breaking happened. Eventually it reaches 20 millimeters, which I said was the furthest I wanted to go. So that was my second end of test criteria. So here's my load and my displacement. I've had it this is a circular cylinder. I've had it also calculate stress and strain for me. In the method, I, did, I could have clicked on a button that told me that it would show me on the graph what the slope is, which would be the modulus. Minimize that, and I can look at my chart for my specimen. The max load was 283 newtons. The max stress was 140. So this is my ultimate tensile stress in flexion. The max flexural strain was about two and a half percent. My modulus is about eight gigapascals. And my slope of the stress strain curve is about 85 newtons per millimeter. And if I finish the sample, it will save my file, the raw data file. If I do not hit finish, it will not save my raw data file. And that's the end of the flexure method.